Welcome to the latest Wax Ecstatic Pack Break. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and on this upcoming episode of Wax Ecstatic, which will be coming your way on Friday, May the 8th, it'll drop at noon Eastern on all of our platforms, we're going to be talking a little bit about 83 Tops. And it's so funny what happens when you clean your closets and organize your collections. And we've been doing a lot of that uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, right? Well, actually, before things got locked down, I was organizing my stuff and I found these two cello packs that I had bought in a lot of packs, I want to say, oh, I don't know, probably about two years ago. And I had opened up one or two on the show and just put the rest away and found them. I went, well, here we go. We've got something to talk about on an upcoming podcast. And we're not only going to talk about the 83 set, which was a great set for Tops. It was a great year for the hobby just to begin with. But it was also the start of a string of incredible sets that Tops put out. And one big reason why they put out some incredible sets was they could no longer just live with mediocrity. And I think most collectors will tell you that Tops had some pretty mediocre sets that came out the previous four or five years. But the 83 set, from a design standpoint and also the rookie standpoint, really stands out. And we're going to talk about the rookie cards. Now, rookie cards have been around since, well, the beginning of baseball cards. You can go back to the 19th century, basically, and find rookie cards. But because of that competition and because the hobby was becoming more of an industry, a business, well, the hunt for rookie cards became a hot thing, and especially in 1983, and it would carry on for many, many years, still does to this day. So we'll talk about the things that led up to the rookie card hunt of 1983, the after effects as well, and how it's still part, a key part, in fact, of collecting baseball cards. But let's dive into these two 83 tops. Uh, cello packs, 56 cards, two crunchy sticks of bubble gum. I can hardly wait. And uh, already the key part of this pack opening is your chance to win a World Series trip or ColecoVision. Look at that. You could play the winning lined up baseball game. You got the scratch off card inside and uh, you could collect game cards and uh, get special Collector Edition Glossy Sets. Excellent stuff there. All right, let's uh, move past the ColecoVision. Of course, we're looking for key cards from 1983 tops, include those big rookies, which, of course, are Ryan Sandberg, Tony Gwynn, and Wade Boggs. Now, I'm going to peel the winning card here in the Crunchy Bubble Gun. Here's the, the uh, rub-off card, if you will. You would win a World Series trip or... You could win, uh, let's see, a ColecoVision video game system and Donkey Kong cartridge. That's a winner. Also, uh, baseball batting glove, tops mini baseball card sheets. So some pretty cool things there. All right. We're in the old Stargell Stars, Larry McWilliams of the Pirates. The dreaded manager card and quite possibly a dreaded manager. Now, he was actually a hard luck guy. Of course, the late Gene Mock. We've got Dave Beard of The Athletics, ironically not sporting a beard. How about that? Dan Norman of The Expos. Look at that batting practice jersey. You know, there's a lot of love for The Expos, and a lot of people dig up the old baby blue, the powder blue jerseys. This is a beaut right there. John Pacella of the Minnesota Twins. We've got our Red Sox leaders, Jim Rice and Bob Stanley. George Vukovic. Boy, look at that trucker hat going on there. I've got a similar Phillies hat that uh, I bought at a garage sale for a dollar. Vuk makes it look better. There you go. Super veteran. Kind of the uh, before and after pictures here. Raleigh Fingers in 1968. First year of the Oakland Athletics and then nearing the end of his career. He still had a couple more years left in him with Milwaukee. Of course, the Hall of Famer. Frank LaCourt of the Astros. We've got your Astros leaders, Ray Knight and Joe Necro. Lee Smith, future Hall of Famer here in the making. Then with the Cubs, we got our checklist. Ed Ott, kind of looking like Andy Etchebarren there with the sideburns. Good look. 
Another Hall of Fame closer, we were actually talking about him on a recent episode, Bruce Suter, as a rookie in 76 with the Cubs, later with the Cardinals. Of course, uh, his career would be winding down then. Mr. Tony Pena, we talked about him recently. We've got Larry Christensen of the Phillies. Looks like he's just flying through the air there, doesn't he? Let's see, what else we got here? The Yaz, Carl Yastrzemski, uh, end of the career here designated here and we also have a uh, Yastrzemski card here uh, batting leadoff in the next pack got Alan Ashby of the Astros Frank White of the Kansas City Royals Tim Blackwell boy look at that stash what I mean look at that my goodness he is the walrus cuckoo could chew John Wathen of the Royals Avon de Jesus, of course, this was just prior to the, uh, or just after the legendary trade for Ryan Sandberg, one of the big rookies you're chasing after. Al Bunbury of the Orioles. We've got Willie Wilson of the Royals. Tony Armas of the A's. Amos Otis of the Royals. Mario Soto of the Reds. And we finish up with Mr. Chili Davis. All right, so got some Hall of Famers out of that one. You know, no big rookies, but you've got the uh, Raleigh Fingers before and after. You've got the uh, Bruce Souter before and after. And uh, yes, that's a great card there. And, and before I open the second pack, let's flip these cards over here because one of the best things about 83 Tops was also the design of the backs of the cards. Very easy to read. Tops finally getting away from green, which was prevalent on the backs of a lot of their cards for many, many years in the 70s. But uh, going with the gray cardstock, the light orange as well and the uh, black text. Of course, a guy like Yaz, it's all career stats. But let's find somebody who was very early in his career here, Alan Ashby. So you've got the card number. You've got the uh, little shadow effect player there, personal information, uh, career uh, numbers there, and then normally some trivial factoid or two about the player. So like I said, no big rookies, but some good veterans and Hall of Famers. All right, let's open up the second pack here. I'm going to take out the gum card. All right, so there we go. And as I mentioned before, we've got the uh, Yastrzemski Super Veteran card leading off here, 1961 and 1983. What a career. And I, actually, let me flip over the back of this card. Unfortunately, as I'm just flipping through uh, the cards here, the uh, top left corner is a little dinged on some of these cards. So hopefully we don't get a big rookie card here. But uh, here you go, the Super Vet card with milestones, major league debut, number of years in the big leagues, and then some other standout moments. All right, let's see who else we've got here. Like I said, I'm hoping there's no big, super big rookie cards here because these uh, upper left-hand <laughs> corners are really dinged up. All right, we've got uh, Mick Keller here of the Angels. Rick Sweet of the Mariners. Do you know what's sweet? That afro. Look at that. That That's half afro, half merm. I love it. Frank Pastore of the Reds. Look at that. Just damn glad to be there. Another super veteran in Jim Palmer. 1965 on the left, 1983 on the right. Bruce Hurst, early in his career with the uh, bad cop, no donut mustache. Butch Hobson, of course, most people relate him to the Red Sox, but here with the Yankees. One of the great 80s baseball names, Johnny Walkenfuss. <laughs> Can you walk and fuss at the same time? Jerry Turner of the Tigers. Jerry's also damn glad to be here. We've got Gary Allenson of the Red Sox. Mike Jorgensen of the Mets. Ron Gardenhire, of course, Gardy, later on uh, making a name for himself as a manager. Jamie Easterly in the Specs with the Brewers. Our Padres leaders for 1982, Terry Kennedy and Tim Lawler. We have Bobby Mitchell of the Twins. Doug DeCensis, so there's a, a star card from the time for the Angels. Bob Brenly, also future uh, broadcaster and manager. Tom Brennan of the Indians. Billy Sample of the Rangers, last year, 1982, that they wore that jersey. We've got the veteran, Reggie Smith. 
with the Giants, and I'm wondering, no, that's a Cubs uniform. I thought that might be a Braves uniform. I thought maybe that was Dale Murphy, but it's not the case. Mike Rickert of the Rangers, Sal Butera of the Twins. We've got Jerry Mumphrey chasing down a fly ball. Looks like in spring training with the Yankees. Dennis Leonard of the Royals. Great Fu Manchu look there. Got Milk May of the Giants. Andre Thornton of the Indians. We've got the veteran Dave McKay, who would a long time uh, assistant coach with Tony La Russa. We talked about Dave McKay about a year ago when we talked about 77 tops. And we've got Joe Cowley here to wrap it up. So it's not often I go, well, thank goodness I didn't get a very valuable card, but I'm going to see if I can get these in the light right. You know, see that? That's kind of the downside of uh, some of those cello packs. They get bumping around for years. And, well, the uh, cards, even though there's no big names in here, I mean, some notable names, but no big, uh, you know, $20 or $30 cards. Uh, these will fill the big monster box rather nicely. So there you go. Uh, no big rookie cards. So that's unfortunate, but quite a few Hall of Famers. And even if you don't get the big rookie cards, I mean, you just look again. Uh, the design of the 83 Tops cards, the front of the cards, even the dreaded manager cards look good. But uh, I always enjoyed the... Uh, design of the front, we talked about the backs of the cards, a real winner that is still very popular almost 40 years later. So we'll talk about 83 tops, we'll talk about the rookie card sensation that really went into full steam in 83, and a whole lot more. Coming up on our next podcasting on Friday, May the 8th, drops at noon Eastern via Audio Boom and is transmitted everywhere along the RSS feed as uh, we're on Apple Podcasts and all the other uh, outlets as well. Don't forget to follow us at Wax and Gum Stands on Twitter if you aren't already. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.